Hi, welcome to this org. Org OLC is online lecture class. In this class, we are going to be introducing you to biology. As a science student, whether beginner or intermediate or advanced learner, in the line of biology, you need to understand what biology is all about as one of the scientists in the world. Now, biology as a course is one of the major requirements for all science students that want to take up career in biological or medical line. And to be an expert student, to have a very good knowledge of biology, introduction to the course to let you know what it entails is very, very important. But before we proceed, I welcome you to ABP ALK section. ALK OLC is online lecture class. And in this class, we have more than one class, so it make it ALK, O-L-C, online lecture classes. We are scientists, but we are open to expand to all other departments, like commercial and health, as we expand on this online lecture. But for now, we started with five major subjects in the line of science, and any student who, who want to like offer mathematics and English language can also join us. I must let you know that today, technology has advanced effects on education. And that is the reason why you as a student, it is very, very important you update yourself with the latest level of education. I congratulate you for being one of our students because we are offering you the best of lecture in the world. We sit down at a specific spectra of education spectrum because we want to anchor some particular section of education we cannot cover all. So, the spectrum that we anchor into out of all the spectra of education lies between SSC students and students who want to offer examination. For A level students, we still have that in plan, but not now. But for those who want to offer down NECO White and NECO GC YGC, you are fully welcome. This platform gives you high flexibility in learning condition. You can learn anytime. You can learn anywhere. Imagine you cannot go to tutorial in real life at exactly 10 p.m. in the evening. What are you looking for? But with this art, with this art, I'm telling you, you can have your lecture anytime, any particular period of hour. But I must let you know that unlike your real life tutorial center, that once you meet, miss a class, you can never regain it again. This online lecture classes, it's not like that. You can miss a class, but never try to miss it for a week. We intentionally did it like that so that all students can buckle up because any, for anything that you want to achieve in life, you must put some certain amount of effort to achieve success. Let me tell you, the, the era of Elijah is gone. And let me tell you in details, I said the era of Elijah has gone. In this era, there is no shortcut to paradise. You have to die first. The meaning of this is that if you really want to take up a profession, you really want to be an expert, 
you have to invest both time and money. And this will determine your sources and the level of your standard by the time you will be an individual that will be independent of your parents. I want you to know that with these online lecture classes, you can help your parents in their shop, in their business, where they are making their money to make money for them. While you are with your phone, your exercise book, putting down crucial points that enable you to have a good result in any form of examination is not a problem at all. As a tutor, I must let you know that to excel in life, you have to fear God, obey your parents, and fear humanity. No forces in universe can go against your sources if you have these three things in hand. My name is Adiorzis. I am one of your tutors on ABP. I am a graduate of Obafemi Awolowo University. I have over 11 years of experience in teaching, WIAC, NECO, JAM, post UTME, IJMB, and JUPEP. And I've been teaching since 2009. I must let you know that I am a biochemistry student. If you get to biochemistry department in Obafemi Awolowo University, Request for matric number PC, BCH 2009 You will find my record. So, therefore, I am more than competent in teaching you this course. And we have put all resources together for you to have beyond level of doubt that if you effectively use these online classes, I am very sure success is yours in your education. We have put together honeymoons, acronyms, all things that you need that will enhance your memory to do well in each course that, will be offer that you will be offering on this line. I welcome you and I encourage you to buckle up because what you want to overcome is a giant along your success line. If you don't break that giant, there is no way you can move ahead. In order to break that giant, you need vital information that will enable you to cross across, that, that will enable you to go across. I must let you know that knowledge is a secret. You don't have the secret, that's not what you want to do. On this tutorial center, the video player that you have, is fully programmed with a lot of things that you can do. If I am too fast, you can slow me down, and if I am too slow, you can speed me up. So therefore, you have a thing that will enable you to narrow the scene. Scene narrower is there, click the plus or minus button. It will enable you to narrow the scene or wider the scene, depending on whatever you want, you want to do, depending on your device. I am so sorry that for now, this platform Mobile application is not yet ready. But as we progress, the mobile application will come in to our way. And you can download it anywhere, anytime. Once it is ready, we will let you know. And you will see it on the website. So in case you have any issue to discuss, that number that you are looking at at our website, the one that ends with 4020, it's our, wife, it's our WhatsApp line. You can chat us up, discussing everything that you encounter on our line concerning your education line. Please, only education line. With this information, I must let you know that this is the first very first, this is the very first class that. We are going to we are going to offer to you, which is the introductory biology. And as we are going, I believe that you are going to have a much more evident beyond doubt that this online lecture class 
is one of those things that will enhance success in life. What do we do in ABP? We do thorough analysis that will enable you to have deep understanding of any natural phenomenon that you're going to learn on this class. Let's begin. The aim of this course is to let you understand life and its characteristics. You will also understand hierarchy of life, which is order of arrangement of anything in the same body, either from lower to higher or from higher to lower. That is what we call hierarchy. Now, if you look at the third thing is what we call career in biology. What can you do as a biologist? I am doing one of it, which is teaching biology. That is to say, before I can teach biology, I must have been a biology student. And as a biologist, I have acquired more than enough to make you pass your examination. So in this, uh, in this class, we are going to look at the definition of life, complexity of life, classification level, and so on. This class will give you an overview introduction to all things that you may likely come through in biology. We start with what is life, what is biology, sorry. What is biology? Biology students, biologists, what is biology? It is absolutely true that no examiner will ask you what is biology, but you are, you are not trying to understand that adivination because of examination. You are trying to understand it because you want to take up career in biology. Biology is the study of life. It's no more than that. And it is derived from Greek word. We are going to be doing breaking down of words because the language that we use to develop biology is not my language, neither it is your language. It is neither my language nor yours. Therefore, we need to understand a little bit of this language so that we can do well in this examination. Most of the words that we are using in biology are derived from Greek and Latin. As time goes on, you are going to be seeing much more about this Greek and Latin of a thing. You need to have an exercise book that will enable you to have the list of the words that we are going to be telling you their meaning. This time around, for the sake of what you want to be in life, do not put too much of unnecessary things in your brain. This is the time to focus to your own career. The word bios means life, and logos means toy. So the two come together to form study of life. The two words, the one that we are so concerned about is life. Biology is talking about life. So therefore, if I have biology, I have life. But life cannot be defined, but it has components. There is no single definition for life. But whatever that is living in life, so therefore, we are looking at everything that is inside a living organism, which are the components of life. But ask yourself, are you a living entity? Are you actually living? If you are living, what do you think 
are those things that are that is inside you or that are inside you that responsible for your life. Although we cannot define life, but we know that life consists of some things that we can say that, that if we see these things in anything, we can say that, okay, this particular object is living. Those things we call it component of life. And those components of life, we have coded it with this code, rice. I must let you know it's not the rice that you are cooking at your home. Okay, it's not the rice that you are cooking. It is an acronym that is short name. Acro. Shorting. It is acronym. A name means name. So this is where you will find antonyms and synonym, opposite of name and the same as name. So we have created this acronym to let you remember the component of life. So whenever they ask you that, what are the components of life? Or which of the following consists or is possibly find in a living object? Number one, take out. Every living object must be able to reproduce. Reproduction is one of their capacity. The second one is that they have information for replication. This information for replication, they are DNA and RNA. Uh, I am so sorry for now that you may not understand what this molecule are. So DNA and RNA, they are replication objects that are responsible for what we see in human, in, sorry, in living entity. So the next thing that we have is cell, which is C. That is every living organism is made up of cell. Every living organism, any living organism you may think of, is made up of cell. The last one is E, which is energy and evolution. So every living organism has what we call energy that enables them to grow and reproduce. And this energy chemical, this energy is a chemical, and we call it ATP. So for now, all these things that I am mentioning, I'm so sorry for mentioning them. Just know them that they are the important theories that you will come through in biology. The last one is evolution. This evolution is a gradual change that occurs over a long period of time. This evolution enables us to know that every human being we evolve from ape. Ape is like monkey. If ape evolved to human being, what will human being evolve to in the future that we don't know? And this evolution is one of the major parts of living components that make biology a complex area of study. Now, we have seen that anything that has these components Anything that has these components is called living organism. And every living organism exists in large living environments called biosphere. So therefore, biosphere is a living environment for any organism that is living. Although biosphere consists more than something that is living alone, it consists of both living and non-living factor. Because we have atmosphere there, we have hydrosphere there, we have a um, little sphere there. So I'm going to list all these things, you are going to see them and there are many. Now, as a biology, you have seen it that these are the 
component of life. Today, if they ask you what is life, you will tell them that life is any entity that consists of cell, which use energy for replication and growth in order to reproduce that and later can evolve. This definition comprises of all the five components that we just listed as the component of life. So therefore, check yourself. Are you a living entity? Do you have cell in your body? Do you have chemical energy? And that chemical energy, do you refill it by eating rice, beans, and all those things? Do you have information for, for application? Although those ones, you cannot see them directly. Can you reproduce? It is not until you give back to baby. That is when you reproduce. No. Reproduction is not about only giving back to baby. Every day, the cell of your body divides. And that's the reason why you increase in weight and size. Compare the size of your head when you were a five years old child to where you are now. Maybe the size is still remain the same. And you will have to compare it to when you will be 32. Maybe the size will still remain the same. The fact that those parts are increasing in size is typical evidence of cellular reproduction within you. So every day, every entity inside you that is called cell are undergoing the process of reproduction. Now, as a living entity, you can evolve. A lot of things can change in you. You can undergo mutation. Your gene can change. The uh, genetic code within you can undergo mutation, maybe due to environmental effect or congenital effect. It's maybe it be the one that you inherit from your parents, or it may be the one that is due to environmental condition. When we get to this whole area, so you should be able to determine what are the factors that are endangering your life and what are the factors that will favor your life. This is one of the reasons why you are studying biology. Let's progress. Now, I don't want you to be so scared about this slide because it consists of a lot of things. And I will walk you through this slide one by one. Uh, but you can see here, we have on this slide, we have titled cell hierarchy of living organism. Hierarchy of living organism is a stages, step by step, of life of love, of structure of living organism from the little one to the bigger one, to the biggest one. In this scenario, we want to see what is the smallest entity that is present in the life of a living organism? Let me start from the smallest thing you ever think of. Look at this place. Electron plus proton plus neutron. The three things come together to form what we call atom. So that's the reason why we call electron, proton, and neutron as subatomic particles. If you are SS1 student that you are just hearing this word for the first time, it is necessary to bring out your notes, list them down. They are now part of your national anthem that you must be singing every day until they are part of you. I must let you know that as a biology, all this entity, they are not something that we can see with our naked eyes. They are so tiny that we cannot see them. Even Urban J cannot see those things. So therefore, their existence was proved by experiment that beyond level of doubt that shows that this entity, they exist. And you are going to see those experiments. And by then, you will also believe 
that those things exist. During the experiment, we discover them and we give them the name according to their character, to the way they behave in the course of the experiment. Electron, from the word electro, electronics. So when we talk about electrons, some people say that the meaning of electro can be it can be traced back to Latin origin means amber, dark, very dark resin that is coming out from the part of a plant. But I must tell you as a scientist, there are something that you need to learn by imaginary, and there are something that you need to learn by reality. As a biology, I have never seen such a black resin. The only resin I have seen is the gum that is coming out from the back of a tree. Those trees, a sample of them, is the almond tree that normally grow up in every school compound. So that is one resin that I've ever seen in my life. So now, electron plus proton plus neutron. Proto means first. And neutral means neutral, something that does not have positive or negative. It is zero. So these three words come together to form what we call electron, proton, neutron individually, so that we know their meaning. They bind together to form an atom. We say that proton is subatomic particle that carries positive charge. Put that behind the mind, behind your mind. And if you want to remember, remember proton starts from P and positive also starts from P. So P for P, proton carries positive charge. It is a subatomic particle. Sub means under. Sub means under. Sub means under. Sub means under. And particle means small parts. They are small parts that is under atom. So we say that proton is a subatomic particle that carries positive charge. Electron is a subatomic particle that carries negative charge. Why neutron is also a subatomic particle that carry no charge. Hope you have gotten that. Let's progress. When the three particles come together, they form what we call atom. Atom of the same type, or monuclear atom. They come together to form elements. So by definition, element is combination of atom of the same type. They cannot be split into simpler units by chemical process. But the very important thing that you must know in this definition is that element is a group of atoms of the same type. And we say that they are pure. That is to say, they don't contain two or more things. That is pure substances. They can also come together to form molecule. You see, atom can form an element if there are many of them and they are the same. They can also form a molecule. But at this time, it does not matter maybe they are the same or not. If they are the same, they may form a molecule called homonuclear molecule or homoatomic molecule. Molecule of the same atom. Homo means the same. H-O-M-O. -O. Now, if they form a molecule, let me clear this around so that we can see what we have there. The molecule can grow up to be macromolecule or supramolecule. 
you are going to understand what macromolecule and supramolecule is all about. A new learner plays all these words are very, very important. And all this hierarchy are very, very important. You must know them in order. Because many examiners, they don't joke with this thing. And the order is very, very important. Now, molecules, many molecules will come together under, under intermolecular forces or any other forces, but majorly intermolecular forces to form what we call compound. Let me give you a very obvious example. Listen and make this thing clear to yourself. Molecule can come together to form compound. By definition, molecule, compound, sorry, compound is combination of molecule or two or more molecule. Now, in this scenario, they are bound together by what we call intermolecular forces, which is a type of chemical force. Now, I must let you know that we have intramolecular force. That is the force that combines atom to form molecule. We are going to get the deep idea of, of this in our chemistry. We have interatomic forces here, or intramolecular force along this path, and we have intramo intermolecular force here. This one is intra. This one is intra, while this one is inter. Intra means within, but inter means outside. So, Intermolecular forces combine two or more molecules together to ag 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 aggregate them to form a whole compound. A sample of a compound. A compound is a pure entity. An element is, all, is also a pure entity. Note the two. Because they may ask you which of this, which of this following is or her pure entity. Water that you are drinking is a compound that consists of several molecules of molecule of water called H2O bind together by hydrogen force and other intramolecular forces. But the dominant force inside water is hydrogen bond. That hydrogen bond is responsible for high boiling point of water. We are still going to look at several forces that we have. That is under chemistry. Now, that is for molecule forming a compound. If we look at the next thing that we have here, the molecule can also go to form what we call organelle. But in this case, note it. It is not molecule directly. It is supramolecule. Supramolecule are uh, molecule like DNA, protein. They are giant molecule like that. And they are made up of macromolecule, like sugar, uh, all these peptides like that. Therefore, the supramolecule, they come together to form what, to form what we call organelle. Organelle means little organ. These little organs, they are the ones that come together to form a cell. The cell that we are talking about is not prison. I must let you know that you cannot see organelle with your eyes. You cannot see molecule with your eyes, but compound, you can see it with your eye. Even cell, you cannot see cell with your eye, but you can see tissue with your eye. Example of cell are amoeba paramecium, and most of them like that. 
group of the cell, group of cell come together to form what we call tissue. Group of tissue come together to form organ. Group of organ come together to form system, and many systems come together to form what we call organism. But listen, you can see that we put this place into circle. Cell, tissue, organ, system, organism. This is what we call complexity of life. Complexity of life. This is what we call complexity of life. And the reason is that life actually begins at cell level and go down like that. So if they ask you to list or to write out complexity of life, what they want you to write out is the hierarchy from cell to living organism. Let me now tell you a surprising thing, and lazy very well. Living organism is not necessarily an organism that consists of systems. Living organism can be an organism within this particular hierarchy. Or it can stop at any level. We did the complexity of life. What do I mean by this is that amoeba is a cell and it is a living organism. So amoeba stop at cellular level. Onion is also a living organism. It stop at tissue level. Leaf is a living organism. It stop at organ level. Aloe vera is an example. So, a living organism can be any living entity within this complexity of life. Now, let's progress. Many organisms of the same species, listen, of the same species, come together to form what we call population. So, therefore, we have population of living and non-living entity. Uh, sorry, we have population of living entity. In this scenario, if I look at population here, it consists of living organism of the same species. The meaning of that is that organisms of the same species can interbreed. The meaning of that is that if the two organisms come together to give birth to an offspring, Spring. The offspring can also give back to another offspring. It must be a fertile offspring, not sterile. A fertile offspring. This is an offspring that can give back to another offspring, but this one cannot give back to another offspring. So in this scenario, we have seen that many organisms of the same species come together to form population. And many population, population of dog, population of cow, population of goat, population of human being, all together, they come together to form a local community, not the community in your village. For example, we can take the community in your village to be part of community because there are many living entities within, you know that. In fact, both bacteria, virus that you don't see around you with your eyes are also living entities around you. But we don't include virus as a living entity because it will not live unless it is present inside living organism. So we treat virus as a separate case in this course. Many community, they come together to form what we call ecosystem. So, and if you somebody that have community around you, several communities around you, is called ecosystem. And if or if we have adjacent ecosystem, it's what we call landscape. 
many landscape give what we call biosphere. So the biosphere, it is a region where you can find both living and non-living entity. And it is, it is environment where we are living. Where you live, where I live. And it consists of what we call atmosphere. Atmosphere. Atmosphere means here, gas. The region that gives us the head that we're breathing and out. It consists of hydrosphere. Hydro means water. So it's a region where we can find water that we are drinking. It also consists of lithosphere. The little means solid, which brand that we are working on. So therefore, this is the hierarchy of entity that we need to understand as a whole. There is much more thing that I want us to look at at this particular point. And that thing is the table in between here. It states difference between molecule and compound. So look at the difference between molecule and compound. If you want to know the difference, if you want to know the differences, you can see, you can list them under this particular header. You can know their difference by definition. You can know their difference by relatedness. You can know their difference by example. You can know their difference by structure and feasibility. So if you look at it very well, we see that molecule is a group of it's a group of two or more atoms. Do you see that? That molecule is, the, is in the front of atom. So they define molecule with respect to what is what, what was it behind. Something it left behind, it left atom behind. So if you want to define molecule, you have to remember atom. So in this scenario, we said that molecule is a group of atoms held together by chemical bond. There are two things there. Group of atoms held together by chemical bond. A compound is a substance which is formed by two or more type of elements which are united chemically in a fixed proportion. Now look up. You can see that here we have elements that lead to compound. That is one definition. That is one definition. We have elements that lead to compound, and the compound may be what? Inorganic or organic. So therefore, the compound can be inorganic or organic. Therefore, this definition have taken the part of element into consideration. But there are some definition of compound that look into molecule relationship. So therefore, you can define compound based on molecule or element. Now, listen, if we look at this table very well, compound is a substance that is formed by two or more different type of elements united under chemical bond in a fixed proportion. There are a few words that you need to monitor here to get your full mark for that definition. But if you want to do use definition based on element, you are free to use this. A compound is a substance which is formed by two or more 
different types of elements, not the same element. Two or more different types of elements, which are united chemically, but not ordinarily in a fixed proportion. That fixed proportion is very, very important in your divination. That's one of those things that identify a compound. Let us look at relatedness. By relation, we see that all molecules are not compound. We see that all molecules are not compound. All compounds are molecules. Can you see? All compounds are molecules. Therefore, in every molecule, there are compounds. We can also say that a compound is a substance that is made up of the same type of molecules held together chemically at fixed proportion. Listen to me. When I use molecule, I use the same. When I use element, I use different. If you want to form, form a compound of water, you need ordinary molecule of water to form compound of water. So in this scenario, you have, say, you have also had the definition for molecule with respect, so sorry, for compound with respect to molecule. An example of molecule is ozone, oxygen, ammonia. Uh, sorry for mentioning those chemicals, you may not know them for now, but you are going to know them. But those ones that are very close to you in your house is molecule of water, two hydrogen, one oxygen bind together like that. An example of water is table salt, the salt you are eating in your house. And as well as water, you know that water is a molecule. But when we are talking about water as a molecule, we are looking at just one molecule of water. When we are talking of water as a compound, we are talking about many molecules of water bind together chemically. A sample is hydrogen bond like that. What about structure? Molecules are simple. As, sorry, molecules are simply a group of atoms which are, which are bonded by strong force. And those forces are ionic, covalent, and dirty, as well as metallic. We are going to look at those one by one. I just want you to understand something, that you should be able to understand the distance between atom, molecule, and compound. And you should be able to see the relationship between them that one is formed by aggregation of order. So in this scenario, let's look at the uh, structure of compound. All compounds are actually matter in their complete shape. Don't worry, we are going to look at those things one by one, because when we get to molecule, we are going to visit an uh, area in chemistry called structure of molecule. You will be able to see why some molecules are linear, some molecules are bent, and like that. So we are going to explore the concept of bond electron and free electron like that. Don't worry. All these things, we are going to analyze them one by one. Chemistry, biology, they are not something you should be cramming at all. Now, feasibility. Molecules are not feasible. You know that. But compounds are feasible. So let's move on to see what is the next thing that we are going to discuss. Yes, the next one we are going to see in the line of biology after we have explained the whole concept behind 
how organism is formed and the hierarchy of organism is to look at what atom is all about. So what you are seeing here is, is this thing, this structure of atom, and it is the smallest unit of an element. Can you see that? It is the smallest unit of an element that takes part in chemical reaction. You know that element is in the front of atom. So that is to say every element is formed by atom. So that's the reason why we call atom as the smallest unit of element. Let me now let you understand some things. In real world, all these red lines, this red line, they are not there. Those lines are imaginary line. They are imaginary line that show the path at which this particular electron is moving through along with along the nucleus of the atom. You see, atom itself is nothing than this and this. What you have here, what you have here is the aggregation of proton, which is the positive charge, and neutron, which is neutral. Why the electron is moving around them in an elliptical path? This ring is not there in real life. It is an imaginary one. So this is how atom look like. And if you want to see an atom, the easiest way you can see an atom is to use an element. A sample of element that you can have in real life is the copper wire that they use to wire all your house. That is a element, it's a pure. So that wire consists of group of atoms of copper bind together. Only elemental analyst knows how to go around to enable you to see how atom appears when they are looking at them at a very enhanced level. So this is where we will be saying goodbye for this class. In the next class, we are going to continue with the next line of action. But today, you've learned and you've understood that life is an entity that, I, that is made up of many components. And these components are just five. They are coded as rice. If you can remember that rice, you'll be able to list the five. Every living entity is made up of cell. They have energy materials. They synthesize energy to keep living so that they can replicate their replication information materials, which is DNA and RNA. We have, um, that is, that is information materials. After that, you know, you have rice, that is how you have, they can reproduce and therefore they can also undergo evolution. So the key was today that you will remember in addition is the hierarchy of living organism that we have extended to hierarchy of biosphere. So in this scenario, you should be able to identify the complexity level within that hierarchy. And you should be able to list them in order without any confusion. Today, you have learned the basic differences between molecule and compounds. And you also heard the word supramolecule, macromolecule, organelles as well, as well. So this today's class should give you a very powerful hint about what life is all about, as well as what you will be able to visualize around you as an entity that is living or not living. I remain the same. I am your uncle, Adira Aziz. Thank you.
for listening.